This short video will teach you the basics of referencing. First off, what is referencing? Referencing gives credit to the authors and sources of information that you have used in your writing. If you use somebody else's idea or quote them in your paper, you must include a citation and a reference for them in your paper. There are two parts to a reference in your paper. First off is the in-text citation. A citation should appear in the main body of your text and this appears whenever you refer to the ideas or work of another author. The second part is your reference list item. A reference list is a complete listing of all the books, journal articles, websites and other sources that you have referred to in a piece of work. Your reference list will appear on a separate page at the end of your document or paper. Here is an example of how in-text citations appear. I have chosen to highlight these citations in bold so that they stand out for the purposes of this video, but you do not need to make them bold in your paper. In-text citations are commonly made up of two pieces of information. Here we have Spurlock 2004 and MacDonald 1997. These two pieces of information are usually the author's surname and the year of publication of the work. If you include a direct quotation in your, in your paper, then you need to indicate what page that appeared in that particular text. Here we see how our in-text citations would appear in a reference list. I've already stated that a reference list appears on a separate, doc a separate page at the end of your document, and it is an alphabetical list of all the sources that you refer to in your paper. If I take Spurlock, for example, the reference list follows the following sequence. You have author surname, initial of the author's forename, year of publication, the title of the work, the subtitle of the work, the nature of the work in box brackets. In this case, it's a film. We have the place of publication and we have the publisher. So the surname of the author always appears first in a reference list and you only need to indicate the initial of the author's first name. The year of publication always appears directly after the author in brackets. And then immediately after the year of publication appears the title of the work. So if you notice here, there is no comma and there is no full stop in between the year of publication and the title of the film. The main title of the work is always italicized in Harvard UL and that includes the subtitle. You should also notice here that the main title in this case follows what is known as sentence style structure. So that means that only the first letter of the first word gets a capital letter unless there is a person or a place mentioned in the title. This continues through again into the subtitle. You will notice that it says film in box brackets here. That is just to indicate the nature of the work, uh, in this case that it is a film. If this was a book, you would not need to indicate book in box brackets. After the title, you have a comma, and then you have the place of publication. Beverly Hills is noted here. If you have the option to include multiple places in your reference list, then always opt for the city. Sometimes you will just be given a, um, a country. If that's the case, that is fine. But if you have a city, indicate that. And then finally, list your publisher. Roadside attractions in this case. Here we have some rules for in-text citations. So as you will see here, the number of authors of a work will affect how it looks in your in-text citation. A work that has one author will be cited in the format as seen here, Buckroyd 1996. If you have a work that has two authors, then you will indicate both of those authors by surname in your citation. As you see here, Beardsworth and Kell, 1997. 
If the work that you are citing has more than three authors or three or more authors, then you need to shorten it down so you include the name, the surname of the first author mentioned and then indicate et al afterwards. It means and so forth in Latin. So if we see this example here, for three or more authors, you have Cohen et al, 2000. If you look at their reference list item, you will see that all authors are mentioned. But in your citation, you just indicate the first author and then shorten it down for et al. If the source that you are referring to or that you're citing has no author, then it is okay to cite the title of the book in place of the author. See the example here, we have Black's Medical Dictionary, 1992. Confusion and uncertainty often arises when it comes to quoting sources. People are often uncertain as to whether they have to include a citation and a reference list item when they are paraphrasing or providing a summary for another person's work. And yes, you do. If you are quoting, paraphrasing or summarizing the work of another author, then you need to include a citation and a reference list item. You always need to include a reference when you're using someone else's idea or quote. But there is a difference in how it appears in your in-text citation. So if you quote an author, that is, to directly use another author's words, you need to acknowledge that source. So if you see in the blue text box here, your in-text citation appears Kritzer, 2003, and then P.31. So because you are quoting an author, you need to indicate where that quotation appears in their work. So this is how a citation appears for a quotation. If you are paraphrasing an author, that is to express the author's work in your words, you still need to acknowledge that source, but you do not need to indicate a page number, as you will see in the green text box. The same is to be said for a summary. If you summarize an author, that is to describe broadly the findings of a study without directly quoting from it, you do not need to indicate a page number it is okay to just indicate the author's surname and the year of publication. Here are some rules that you should follow when you are writing up your reference list. All references should be in alphabetical order by the author's surname. References should not be numbered the layout, punctuation and capitalization of all references must be consistent. Capitalize your book, article and chapter titles in sentence style. I mentioned earlier that sentence style is when the first letter of the first word is capitalized, but all other words are lowercase unless there is a person or a place mentioned in the title of a book or work. You need to capitalize all personal names and places, capitalize journal titles, put the main source in italics. For non-traditional material, references should include details of format and or medium after the main source title. For example, DVD in box brackets, like appeared in the example slide earlier. Use hanging indents to visually differentiate between references. In a hanging indent, all but the first line of each reference is indented from the left margin. See the example below, Beardsworth and Kell. To include a hanging indentation in Microsoft Word, highlight the desired piece of text, right click on it, and then select the paragraph options. Once you have opened this tab, you need to select hanging under the special format. 